Proof of Reserve has become a benchmark that all cryptocurrency exchanges are required to meet, especially after the FTS crash. It provides evidence that the cryptocurrency sent to a centralized exchange is actually held by the exchange and not just an illusion on the screen, as was the case with FTX. Now, when I send, say, for example, Bitcoin to an exchange, the exchange should not use it, they should not lend it out, invest it, spend it, or do any other thing with it besides keeping it safe for me. The exchange can only earn revenue from the transaction fee when I trade that particular Bitcoin. So, how can I be sure that the Bitcoin that I sent to an exchange is truly there and not maliciously used by the exchange? This is where proof of reserve comes to play. But does proof of reserve really work and you know how to use it or can it be manipulated? The truth is that proof of reserve can be manipulated and that is what no one is telling you. In this video, I will explore the concept of proof of reserve including its working history and the potential for manipulation. Let's start with Jesse Powell who is the CEO of Kraken. But before Kraken, he has worked with Mt. Gox and witnessed its crash in February of 2014. Mt. Gox was hacked of over 850,000 BTC, which did not happen all at once. It took place over time, but the management did not notice because they were not doing their job. Anyways, so Jesse Powell, while building his own exchange cracking, decided to integrate a way for people to verify that their fund is truly in the exchange. That is proof of reserve. So Kraken actually started with a reserve before every other exchange. So how does proof of reserve work? There are three main steps to implement proof of reserve. One is that the exchange contracts an independent external auditing firm who takes an anonymized snapshot of the exchange balance and verify that the assets they claim to hold on behalf of their customers is there. Two, the exchange take notes of all the amount that the customers have deposited into the exchange and check if it correlates with what the exchange have on a one-to-one -one ratio. Three, they construct a tool that helps the customer verify that their account balance is indeed in the exchange balance sheet. This is done using what they call the Markel tree. The Markel tree has three major components, the leaf, the stem, and the root. The leaf are customer's assets, hash together to form the stem, then hash together to form the root, which is the exchange balance. Hash in here is used to protect the customer's identity throughout the whole process. If you're getting lost at this point, this is what I mean. The Market Tree basically links my account balance to the assets the exchange is holding. It is done in such a way that I can trace my balance to the exchange assets, but cannot trace my balance from the exchange assets. In other words, with my leaf, which is private to me, I can verify that my balance is in the root. But from the root, I cannot trace back to my leaf, protecting my identity since every other person have access to the root data. Do you understand this? If you go to Binance under the wallet section and click on verification, you can see the audits that has taken place. You can get your leaf and verify that your asset is in the proof of reserve. Bybit have their proof of reserve in the Nansen portfolio. By the way, I'm loving Bybit right now. This is actually from Bybit. And if you don't have an account with Bybit, there's a link in the description. Use it to register with Bybit. When you register and deposit using the link in the description, you qualify for a $30,000 bonus from Bybit. Now that you understand what proof of reserve is, what are they not telling us and how can it be deceptive? First, proof of reserve is not in real time. It is done periodically. Kraken used to do theirs twice a year and they plan to do it more often. Binance has done it twice. My point is this, an exchange can borrow money to conduct proof of reserve after which they return that money. Two, we have to trust that the independent auditing firm 
is trustworthy enough and competent to give an accurate data. Three, the exchange contracts the independent auditing firm and pays them to conduct proof of reserve. So, since they are paying them, there's possibility of manipulation or going in the way of the exchange. Four, not everyone can use the market tree verification process. I myself have not figured it out. So, how can you truly verify that your money is there? So, the deception here is that an exchange can say that they have proof of reserve to gain customers' trust who really don't bother to check if it is true or know how to even use it. And the exchange can go ahead and do their normal business or their business as usual. So it doesn't really change much, but it is a step in the right direction. And as with every new technology, it's gonna keep getting better to the point where it becomes real time. I hope one day it becomes real time or we have a better solution. Beside proof of reserve, there are other ways to know how solid, secured, regulated, and customer oriented an exchange is. If you want to know my top cryptocurrency exchanges, then you should watch this video.